I don't understand why Prez ain't trying to do the Tico Texas radio. That shit will blow up way bigger than his shit. His shit is straight boring. I tried to listen to that shit. My ears were fucking bleeding. Like, this nigga talks about nothing. Like, at least my shit would be popping. Like, y'all like that boring shit at Barstool, though, or something, because I don't know how he even still got a job. What does he even add to Barstool? Like, what does he do? He doesn't even have a personality. He's fucking as dry as fucking mustard. Like, I don't know. Whatever. You're supposed to be recording this, bitch. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> I'm just saying, what are you just staring at me for? I'm saying, what is your point of the behind the scenes? Testing. Tico, Texas, one, two, three. Can you hear me? Oh, it's my nigga Dave was here. My name is Tico, Texas, the motherfucking OG. And I'm a rap star and a model and an actress and an entrepreneur and the baddest bitch in the whole world. Um, <laughs> I hadn't heard of Barstool. I had never heard of Barstool before. Um, prior to getting into a Twitter fight with Kevin Clancy. I hate that name. <laughs> I fucking hate that name. I'm really good friends with Big Sean. So he's been one of my best friends since, since like 2009, is Big Sean. And he was dating, you know, that bitch, <laughs> Ariana Grande. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck he was doing with that, but I searched Twitter, Big Sean, Ariana Grande, because I wanted to see why did they break up or what, you know, everyone was talking about. The first tweet I see is Kevin Clancy's fucking article about how Big Sean is a D-list rapper and how, how Ariana Grande needs an A-list guy like Justin Bieber. I feel like that was kind of racist. I feel like that was just kind of childish, so. From there it was on, going back and forth, Tico calling Kevin and basically all Barstool fans, baseball fans, because we're white. A baseball fan is a white person, but not a regular white person. A baseball fan is <laughs> the white person that doesn't really know too much about anything else except for baseball. And I tweeted him, yo, your writer skills suck. You know, you should be embarrassed and you should be fired, something like that. And he went off. And he had witty responses, I had witty responses, everyone was just kind of getting in it, and it just got way bigger. And Tico Texas, who is a full-blown Big Sean dick rider, goes nuts over this and tweets back at me saying, you know, I'm some corny white boy, and what do I know? And it just went absolutely bananas. Like, it blew the fuck up. I don't know, they always want to talk shit about my rap career. I want to talk shit about Kevin Clancy, how he's a loser and a bum, and has a fucking weird-ass dog that he thinks is, like, always putting in dog shows. It's Caucasian shit, you know? No gas. My dog is more famous than you'll ever be. I'm not even exact. At that point, Duncan is probably, like, brand new to my household. The new, like, he probably he won the dog show uh, title. He's the champ. He legitimately was more famous than Tico Texas. And you know what? Tico has always been, she's always on that verge, always on that line of like, I hate your fucking guts because you're a fucking talentless hood rat piece of trash. But I respect the hustle and I respect the grind. And it was kind of like, you know, we went into that rap arena. She was absolutely god awful and everything I've ever heard of her is, is terrible. But there's a mutual respect when you go through a battle like that corny that's that's like the first word i can say am i just absolutely corny just like the kid in high school that was never cool never had any friends and then he kind of grew up and like you know got a cool job and now he like can say things on the radio but his kfc radio fucking sucks you know, that's what I'm saying, like, I don't understand why Prez ain't trying to do the Tico Texas radio. That shit will blow up way bigger than his shit. His shit is straight boring. I tried to listen to that shit, my ears were fucking bleeding. Like, this nigga talks about nothing. Like, at least my shit would be popping. Like, y'all like that boring shit at Barstool, though, or something, because I don't know how he even still got a job. What does he even add to Barstool? Like, what does he do? He doesn't even have a personality. He's fucking as dry as fucking mustard. Like, I don't know. Whatever. That's right, she had a GoFundMe to get into the studio as a fucking rapper. Bitch, ain't nobody donating any more money to hear you rap, take the 165 and go pay your cable bill one time for once. Ooh, that was coming in hot. So I'm like, hold up, I'm gonna make a GoFundMe. You know what I'm saying? Because people say they're gonna give me money, and shit, I'm gonna take the money, and I'm gonna do the rap biz, you know what I'm saying? So I made the GoFundMe, 
So I pledged my donate, like, I will produce this rap song for you, Tico. If you make the song, Dave will pay for it, in Italian. Credit to Tico, she takes it a step further and she says, I'm gonna get my own material out of this. I'm gonna jump in the booth and, and make a track. <laughs> oh, you know his name, man. Oh, I hate that nigga, you should know that name. Hey. Yeah, she made a song. She had some guy make an unbelievable hook, Numbers Never Lie. The Numbers Never Lie hook stands the test of time. She sang, it was graphic. She's like, my black boyfriend's gonna like jizz in your face, like type shit. I mean, it was, it was graphic. Fuck Kathy Clancy, use a straight fraud line in your articles. Cheating just like a bra. I'm black man, not Batman, but you two-faced. I should let my boyfriend fuck your fucking roommate. Spraying white in a mouth like she tricking toothpaste. Kevin, you a snitch, so you be a fuck the bitch. Yeah, the numbers, they don't lie. Cut the bodies in the ditch. Yeah, and then you gon' cry, a.k.a. man, at your head. Kevin Clancy is a cunt. It don't matter about his race. See the on 66, coloring his pet. Here's a tip, write some real new. Like, you gotta watch it. Her lyrical performance was interesting. Babies go on hungry while you feeding Duncan baby food. Born him grad of 20 years, what the fuck you say you do? Sucking press for press. Your daddy must have hated you. Your mommy must have hated you. We all violated you. I listened to it on my couch in like pop champagne and was like just singing Numbers Never Lie. Like, numbers never lie. I'm here to testify. <laughs> numbers never lie. Fuck Kevin Clancy. So I'm popping the balls. It was a ball. Numbers never lie. My name is Tico fucking Texas, and I want to say, Kevin Clancy, you're a fucking cunt. Who writes dumbass fucking article is about literally nothing. And that's why everybody, including your fucking wife and your boss, hate you. That's why they gave me $250 to f***ing rip your f***ing head in half. And when I see you, I'm going to beat your f***ing ass. I'm going to take your f***ing dumbass dog, Duncan, and rip his f***ing head off while I feed it to my f***ing cat, while I sip on a f***ing beer and listen to f***ing Ariana Grande, you f***ing cracker, fat mother f I was like, I'm not going to miss my one opportunity to finally have my dream come true and put out a rap record. So it was just kind of like this back and forth of... What started as a joke becomes a little more serious. I'm trying to get blog material. She's trying to get rap material. We're all looking for exposure and clicks and views. And next thing you know, it's a full-blown rap battle. And then Kevin did his response track with some soft baseball fan, like from American Idol or something. He had like the fluffiest hair. Kevin did like a slow jam type song and half of it was about Tico. And then half of it was about me. Time to step up to the table, play some Tico Texas hold up. I'm about to call this bluff, my Tico Texas hold up. I keep it 100, this diss track gon' be a breeze. When black to it is, this gon' be crying face emoji. So pass me the aux cord, back to set this chick ablaze. She thought she's gon' blow up, but now she's going down in flames. The funny thing is, you still really think you're famous. What part don't you understand, bitch? I'm the one who made this. Without me, there is no you. You're just a fucking big short stand career about to end. From a nerdy fucking baseball fan I wasn't gonna make this track But then I knew I had to Hey Tico, we're not laughing with you We're laughing at you I, thought you I feel like I hit Tico with so much truth She actually believes she's a famous person The only reason anybody is talking about you Is because of me You are a laughing stock You are a joke You can't afford to get in the booth You're ugly your belly button's gross. Every line I hit her with was so fucking true. She'll tell you numbers never lie. I'll tell you the truth. Face like Sam Cassell with a nose like Patrick Ewing. Teeth like Michael Strahan. What the fuck are you doing? Duncan got more game than you and Duncan got more fame than you. About to eat the Tico Texas, make you change your name. Boo, you're welcome for the 15 minutes. Now I'm moving past your first rapper to be murdered by a blogger slash podcast. But this is probably the peak of me and Dave feuding. Taking shots at each other and it's probably like half jokes, half truth. So we're really starting to go at it. And I'm like, this is my opportunity to take some shots under the guise of content. I was in a tough spot though because that dude cuts the check. Tico Texas ashes. I burned up with that torch boy but my work ain't finished here it's time to rip a port boy i waited long enough finally time for me to deliver when
when I'm finished with you, Dave, your family gon' be sitting shiver. I'm sorry, Mrs. Portnoy, he shoulda never messed with me. That's his worst mistake since turning down that DraftKings equity. The way I spit these bars will turn your brain into a noodle. The last time that you got smoked was by my golden fucking doodle. Big schnoz, hair plugs, Quasimodo hunchback. Take one look at Prez and my stomach gives his lunch back. It's all about the Entenmann's, baby. It's all about the Entenmann's, baby. It's all about the Entenmann's, baby. Dave will tell you that it was, it was marshmallow soft, and it's pillows and Charmin. My shit was hard. Like, I'm not hard. I, I That song is exactly what I am. Like, it's poppy, it's a little bit rap, it's funny, it's a little bit, like, obviously poking fun, tongue-in-cheek at me being a corny rapper. And it's catchy, good beat, good hook, people like it. To me, that's the way to make a record is that, you know, you're getting your shots in, but people actually want to listen to it again, I'll take it. What did you think of Kevin Clancy's uh, rap song? We're, we're like, did, does that even exist? Does that even, like, do we really have to talk about that? Because we all know that shit sounded like some vanilla ice, corny ass bullshit. Like, honestly, it pissed me off. Because that's what people think they can do. They think they can just fucking get on a fucking track and just rap a whole bunch of corny ass shit and it's gonna be like, yeah, this rocks. Like, no, music is something that's supposed to actually be like cherished. And that corny ass vanilla ice shit, that shit was the corn. I couldn't even listen to the, I can't even listen to, I can never listen to the whole thing. I literally stop it every 30, like whenever I try to listen to it within the first 30 seconds, cause it sounds so fucking bad. Like at least, could they have put some auto tune on his voice? Why they have to make him sound so white? Nobody wants to hear your white ass rapping on the fucking track, my nigga. Even Eminem doesn't sound like he's white. Machine Gun Kelly don't sound like they're white. Like, come on, do a little edge with it. You're too corny for a rap. You're too corny for life. You're too corny for your wife. You're too corny for everybody. That's why nobody fucks with you, Kevin. You have no fans. Everyone hates you. Sorry, but it's true. Stoolies are lost because Big Bad El Prez is just dead. You can't, he's dead. He's, mean, in the, he's in a pine box. I put him in a pine box. Young Unsweet and White Zinfandel is in tune with the rap game. You are not. You're old. You're a fucking bum. You don't get it. I'm in Nantucket for a month, and I'm just going to sit on that beach and write the meanest stuff, and then come back, and I'm going to get in the booth, and I am going to blow your world up. I don't even want to talk about Tico anymore because I'm no, actually No, you never to want to talk about Tico. You never want to talk about Tico. The Tico is an excuse to, to come at me. We invite her on the rundown to talk about the, the rap battle. And she said yes, but didn't tell us she had to go to like Target or Walmart to use their computers to join the rundown. Oh, oh. oh, oh yeah. yeah. All right, here we go. Bring her on. Tico, these baseball yeah. fans are fucking insane. You know what a real bitch like me did? I went to Target and got on their laptop and I Skyped into that rundown because I wasn't going to let Clancy try to say, oh, she didn't show up or, or even put no dirt on my name. You ain't going to do that. I'm here, bitch. What's cracking? If y'all going to see me in about a year, Tico Texas' name is going to be so fucking big. And it's uh, I don't think so, Tico. No, it's not. It's no, maybe you, maybe you had a chance to no, go. You don't even know what's going on. I got a fucking song with Wiz Khalifa about to come out, my nigga. You don't even know. <laughs> Yo, no. You know, Cat doesn't like me. Big Cat's never like me. I mean, you don't even fucking know me, you fucking weirdo. By the fucking way. You don't like me what? Because I'm young and I'm black and I'm fly and I'm lit. That's why you don't like me? Because I ain't got no problem with your big fat ass. I got no problem with you, motherfucker. So unless you want to see me, I don't need to hear nothing about how you don't like me because nobody gives a fuck. Go suck on Clancy's dick. Y'all can go suck on each other's dicks, okay? Because everybody else loves me, bitch. Everybody else loves me. Can you shout out to Bart? Can you shout out to Bart? Shout out to Bart. Shout out to Bart. This is an all-time classic cool. moment here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's up, guys? <laughs> What's up, dude? <laughs> I freestyled and Clancy couldn't freestyle because <laughs> he's not a rapper. He's a bitch. You know, he's a punk. He's a poser. So he couldn't, he couldn't freestyle. He got mad and clicked out. Well, I can freestyle. You want to hear a freestyle? Yeah. Yes. Something that isn't roast? Yeah. Let, yes. Okay. Are we getting a freestyle battle, Clancy? Yes. 
Yes. Let's see what fucking Chardonnay has now. Let's go. Let's go. This is what real rappers do, Chardonnay. Freestyle battle rap now. Ding, ding, ding. Eight mile this shit. Get him, Tico. Kevin, you ain't shit. That's why I fucked your bitch. Your numbers, they don't lie. That's why his body in the ditch. Clancy is a cunt. Every day of the month, he bleed out his pussy like he's a fucking bitch. Cunt. It was a layup for Cunt Tico. It was a layup for the word cunt. <laughs> Chardonnay is on the ropes. Saying no there is much more effective than me trying and failing there. Let me tell you that much. That was the right decision. She's picking up her shirt, showing her belly button, which is a whole thing into itself. There could be a whole chapter on her belly button. Like, y'all want to see my belly button? My yeah, belly let's button see it. Cute. No, Do nobody it. wants to see the belly button. Tico, I think. Oh God! Oh God! Oh, what is that? I, I, I it's hard if you ask me. <laughs> oh, shut oh, up, me. You know what it is? It's Look at that ass. ass. Show us the ass, out of girl, Tico. If we all could walk around with one one hundredth of the confidence that Tico took, the irrational confidence for that woman to walk around like she owns the joint when she is quite literally one of the most disgusting, unsuccessful people that I've ever seen in my entire life. It's absolutely staggering. I wish I could even be a little bit like that. When they left and me and Dave was by ourselves, that was a great fucking moment. We started talking about De Delflagate. Delflagate. Delflagate, you know, just let it be me and him, the main big dogs, you know what I'm saying? Everybody else is just the bitches. I went through the whole deflate Um, I didn't really understand, so they're saying that he deflated footballs. Well, let me tell you a little story, all right? Tico, how long do you fucking have? <laughs> fucking this rat, Bob Kravitz, starts leaking that the Patriots cheated. And Roger Goodell is a buffoon and has no sense of authority. <laughs> There's no scientific evidence. There's nothing to back it up. There's wow. no evidence one fucking football was deflated. Oh, wow. That's some shit. That is it, some shit right there. Yeah, that's, that's I, real shit. That's street shit. That's uh, the real shit. I work for everything, Clancy. Okay? Through my music. No job, sweetheart. I don't have to suck Prez's dick. Like you, you know? And I'm like, well, now I gotta do a rap song. Uh, so I spent like the summer in Nantucket just writing the lyrics. And I mean, I went hard. Is that your rhyme book? Oh, yeah. I love that he's got a rhyme book. Right. Got to. I, I write on my computer. Too. I write fucking everything. Everything. Like you Larry David. Everything. Yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Gave your life, came at me with a knife. What you forgot, I'm made of steel. Stronger than you have failed to make me kneel. I'm a mortal legend, I'll be here till the end. Question is for you, are you a fraud? Yeah, I like it. Good. Mike Studd offered to help produce it, and we did the Oompa Loompa track. I mean, I love the original beat. It's I just perfect. It's made for a diss, okay. and it's made to like embarrass someone, like the little things in there. You know what I mean? It yeah. has like a. It's perfect for it. Okay. It's fucking if rap. you are wise, you listen to me. But Kevin Clancy couldn't leave it alone. Now I gotta remind you who sits on the Iron Throne. Is that gold? I'm the freaking boss crushing summers on the beach. I'm the freaking boss crushing summers on the beach. That's hit me and he's just like, hey man, like, somehow landed in a rap beef. <laughs> and, uh, you know, he basically came to me like, yo, can you help me, can you help me make it? You skinny fat fuck, you starting to look like my wallet. You want faster? Because we're going to be able to comp this thing. You're going to sound way better than you think. Trust me. You skinny fat fuck starting to look like my wallet. Skinny fat fuck starting to look like my wallet. So he came in and we went into the booth. We lit that place up. At your wedding, you put me in the back row. Oh, Dikembe says, no, no, no. <laughs> At your wedding, you put me in the back row. Dikembe took off, no, no, no. <laughs> At your wedding, you put me in the back row. Fuck no, Dikembe <laughs> So I was in like a little rap beef with this dude, Hoodie Allen, at the time. He was a little dork. And um, I made this song, I, I, he was really short, so I sampled Oompa Loompa, like the Oompa Loompa Willy Wonka. And that was kind of like, I made a hard rap beat with the Oompa Loompa sample, and I was like, oh, this would be, this would be perfect for, for the, you know, for Prez's song, so. 
What do you get when you guzzle down cum? What do you get when you guzzle down cum? Boom, keep going. What do you get when you guzzle down cum? What do you get when you guzzle down cum? What do you get when you guzzle down cum? Bingo, all right, we're good. Caught a vibe, I got Dave high for the first time in years, I think. By the way, he was smoking. You could tell he hadn't smoked in many, many, many years. But uh, yeah, no, I had the full rapper experience. It was good. It was his lyrics. So that's he was he was very adamant about his pen and pad. He just sit there and write it. Um, he had all this shit that he wanted to say. He just didn't. He couldn't rap for his life at all. Like zero rhythm whatsoever. So it was one of those things where basically, like from the other room, we just had him doing it line by line. As soon as I felt like he got it decent enough, we'd move on to the next line, and then I just, we strung them together at the end. He's tone I'm not even kidding, tone deaf. <laughs> it's so funny the way he's rapping that it might be like the best song ever. Bitch, I'll serve you. Bitch, I'll serve you. Bitch, I'll serve you. I got the fame and I got the horse. Check the score. I got the fame and I got the horse. Check the score. I got the fame and I got the horse. Check the score. I got the fame and I got the horse. I have a lot of skills, rhythm, talent, music, not one of them. So like, I'm not great at rapping, so to speak. So I had to like do it word by word and then put it all together. He had some purple drink that I was drinking, high as a kite. Cause page views make that type of money every night. Perfect. Cause pay. Oh, perfect. It's all about like your pockets in between like the drums and the rhythm. Like he just didn't have any of that. KFC, KFC can rap a little bit. Like you could tell he had a little, he had a little like presence. He knew what the fuck he was doing a little bit where Prez had no idea what he was doing. But Prez is just one of those dudes, no matter what he does, it like works. I don't know. Remember when he wouldn't fucking jump ship? Think I fucking had a salary when I started this fucking company, dude? I took my balls in my hand and fucking ran with it. Coward. Fuck it. <laughs> that's, that's rundown. <laughs> the early feedback was Kevin's was the best. I mean, I did like people get shot type music. So uh, I'm very proud of my song and I think it still like works. What do you think of Dave's rap song, Rise, Pay, Rise? That shit was fire. I'm trying to get in the studio, Dave, you know? Let's get in the studio, let's vibe, let's have a beer, let's smoke some weed. You know how we like to do, you know? I be jamming Rise, Page Views Rise. I be jamming that shit, I fuck with that. And the cover art was sick as fuck. But the Rise, Page Views Rise, the logo, ended up being my chest hair. And then I had my shirt off just in the summer, and somebody can like, uh, did you know that your chest hair looks exactly like the logo of Rise Page View, right? And I mean, if you put it next to each other, they're identical. It's amazing. Fuck Kevin Clancy, you should have left it alone. Now I will remind you who's on the Iron Throne. See, I'm Jordan. You're pipping, you're tripping, bro. This is my fucking business. You're living off. I'm the freaking boss, crushing summers on the beach. When I met you, you were crunching numbers like a geek. You're more like Marvin. Without me, you would be starving. You skinny fat fuck. You start to look like my wallet. Ba -ba Backseat driving, dick riding. You are my life. I, I mean, every word was designed to cripple. You an athletic fuck? Can't stand, can't run. I'd say blow my head off. That's an insult to the gun. You're a, You're a Jets, Jets Knicks, Knicks, Nets fan. fan. You, you suck, suck, man. man. Black, Black people, people fucking hate you like the Ku Klux Klan. Damn. <laughs> That's how that line goes. <laughs> I mean, that's... What do you get when you guzzle down cum? He made me beep something out, which I thought was kind of low blow. It's like a rap war, like I'm going for the throat. Fat, fat, fat. Some people got no reason. Some people got no reason. KFC got no reason to live. KFC, he showed up. I still think to this day, I really believe that it's the greatest saga of Barstool content ever. Considering who we are, who we got involved with, the fact that he put out a song, the fact that I put out a song that people like actually liked listening to, the fact that both of us probably put out a song better than the rapper who was involved in the rap battle, that was the moment where I realized that like we could do anything.
I mean, as funny as it was, as like wild as it was to be dissing a boss and a rapper and all that, I was like, holy shit, we can, we can take over the world. Tico and I formed maybe the unholiest, weirdest friendship ever. The first time I met Dave in person was in Texas, South by Southwest, 2016, I believe. Um, wow. Wow. This may have been the weirdest day, 24 hours we've had. They rented a house. I showed up going to meet Tico Texas. Like to be funny in this like old Texas oil outfit, like big hat. We showed up at uh, I think legitimately like I, I, they call it a trap house, I believe is what it is. Tico's just standing naked in like a sheet in the lawn. Tico. I'm drunk as shit and I just woke up. Tico had a real fun night last night, guys. What's going on? Oh my God, oh my God. Oh my God. It's fucking press. So I'm outside smoking a fucking blunt, completely forgetting about the day that's supposed to happen. The fact that Dave is on his way to me, he was motherfucking ready. And he showed up at my door while I'm smoking a blunt outside with my hair wild, dressed from last night, torn and all fucked up. I will never forget that moment for the rest of my life because it was like the most hilarious. She puts a big hug on me. We walk into the house, not with Tico, by the way. So it's just everyone just staring at us. And we got a camera. I'm dressed like I'm old money. It was quite the scene, to say the least. He got his hair braided by somebody in my house. He was dancing, he was rapping, we was rolling weed, we was smoking. Dollar, I put it in my pocket. Nigga, it's been on the floor all day, nigga, I ain't got no wallets. If you give him clean, he's a fat fuck me. He ain't got no wallets. Free riding his ass, he wouldn't move to Boston. Hey, nigga. It was a renegade group of misfits. Let's just say that. Yeah. 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 Thanks, <laughs> UK Tico. The little church lady picked us up. Literally listening to Bible music. Soft. Tico gets in the front, we get in the back. Tico rips out her aux cord, puts in her music, and blasts the most like explicit lyrics in this church lady's face. It was so fucking uncomfortable. Yeah. Almost as uncomfortable when we went to get the barbecue and there's like 50 white people in line at this barbecue. Tico walks in, she's like, I'm just cutting. I'm like, what do you mean you're cutting, Tico? It's like, Tico, Texas doesn't wait in line. She's like nestling up to the front to try this. She just fucking cuts. She's calling. Hey, Tico. Uh, um, no, I'm not skipping. I can't do it. I can't skip, Tico. I'm fucking not doing it. You're on your own. I'm crazy like that. You can't like just cut lines. I always do that. But like, how? I don't know, you see nobody snitches. Nobody snitches? Yeah. Okay, why are you telling me to feel bad? I'm not sure, I'm trying to help you, maybe. You <laughs> cut out. Tico, Texas doesn't wait in lines. It's like, I, I lose, I don't know what that means, Tico. Everybody waits in lines. But Tico, Texas doesn't. All right, Tico. Okay. One thing you need to know about Tico, Texas, I cut every single line. I always get away. The only reason I didn't get away when we cut that food line in Texas was because the Asian guy snitched on me. There's gonna be an Asian guy to step out of the way and he's telling the guy, yo, she skipped. And then I had to go all the way back to the back of the line. That's never happened to me in my life. We went to a show that night that Tico performed at, at a club with like 14 people in it. Tico, 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 and he watched my performance. He was front row. He, I, I, I put my uh, numbers never lie on, on my set just because I knew he was going to be there. So I performed that for him. I'm going to do a little bit of that, a little bit track for y'all if y'all don't mind. I've never performed this shit before. So this shit is going to be fun. Let's do it. Just like a I'm black man, not Batman, but 
Fucking magic. It was amazing. It was every the energy was fucking insane. It was maybe 30 people, 40 people, but it was still just so much energy and so everyone was just it was giving so much love. Like no one was judging Dave for being an older white guy in, you know, cowboy boots on a stage with a younger black girl. No one was looking at him crazy. Everyone was just fucking with it. It was like a good ass vibe and it showed me that's what the world needs, you know what I'm saying? Like And Tico sang her fucking guts out. No voice. Just screaming on her knees. I was still in my cowboy hat, just like rocking with her. It was something. What about Duncan? Who? Oh, yeah, the dog. I thought, like, he's gonna die soon. Like, he's fucking looks like he's 80. Like, I never even seen him go run or do anything. He just lays there. Badass. Kevin Clancy and his dog are both bitches. Tico is capable of anything. Any place, anytime, anywhere. That's Tico, Texas. All my Barstool stoolies go and support whatever I'm doing, and I know they're gonna be down for me. I know Prez gonna be down for me. Fuck Kevin Clancy and Duncan, bitch. But um, I'm just up to me. Rock star shit, you know? Looking good, you know? That's normal. You know? My model shit, you know what I'm saying? Like, fuck, I'm just being a rock star. Like, I've been my whole entire fucking life, you know? That's what I'm up to these days, and that's what I always be up to. While Kevin Clancy will be sucking dick. Big cat, too, if you want the beef. I'm legitimately surprised that Tico Texas is still alive. I don't know how you keep the lights on. I don't know how you put food on your table. Lord knows it's not selling that body of yours. Oh my God, who would even want a piece of that? Like that would probably be your only hope is to just hit the corner and sell yourself for some money. And I feel like people would be like, uh, no thanks. But how's your rap career going, Tico? How was it with Wiz Khalifa and Kanye West? You piece of trash. <laughs> Gotta be the least successful person on the planet. Always remember, Tico, we're not laughing with you, we're laughing at you. It's almost universal I won. Like, he hit me with a feather and I hit him with like a sledgehammer. So if you're gonna get in a hatchet fight, you better bring a hatchet. He didn't bring a hatchet. Anything other than like 100% KFC won this battle is complete revisionist history. That is like no doubt in my mind. That was a 100% W for your boy. If I had no involvement, I would still pick Prez's. I liked Prez's because it was just so different and terrible and awesome where like KFC was actually like a pretty good song. Yeah, I was thinking about making a rap diss against uh, Clancy again. Holla at me, let me know if you really want that, cause it's for y'all, so I do it for y'all. So if y'all really want me to do that shit, I'll do that shit, easy. If I had to get back in the booth, I would. I don't want to, it's a lot of work. Imagine getting a rap beef right now, Kevin. He'd get killed. <laughs> I mean, he'd die. So I don't know, I don't know who else would be. He's, I think he's had to retire now from the rap game. Anybody can catch it, man. I'll get back in the booth when necessary. You, you back me into a corner, you talk some shit, and I feel like it's necessary, I will spit these bars. To you, Tico, may your flame always burn bright. This just means it's out of lighter fluid. <laughs> Tico, you you little bastard. Dave, remember when I gave you a lighter and it, and it wouldn't work? Do you remember that, Dave? I think this is my fucking karma back. This is my motherfucking karma, because I gave you that lighter and it did not fucking work. Friend? Okay. I think I'm good, though. <laughs>